Well, I, I think it all starts back to first identifying the challenge. If you break those challenges down and you isolate them and look at them in chunks, it's less overwhelming. Don't get discouraged, kind of break it down and start from the simplest things. I, I always kind of fall back on that old adage, you know, form follows function. Pitco has done a really good job with Tetrix with creating our flex chassis, which gives you a really good sound foundation or a starting point. So that was where I began the process. The particular game element shape is a very unique shape. Uh, and we, in the course of building the robot, we, we thought about trying to capture that shape and how to, how to manipulate it. And it lended itself well to being able to drive up and catch it in um, a metal frame. But it didn't exactly get us exactly where we wanted it to be as far as position-wise. So it made sense to 3D print some actual spacers. You're in a time situation, you have a limited amount of time, and it doesn't matter how well the, the item functions, if you can't pick it up in a very short period of time, then it becomes uh, something where you're not gonna be successful, even though you might have built the perfect mechanism. In times when the robot really needs to move fast, you could create a turbo mode where the motors are spinning as fast as they can spin to get you across the playing field as fast as you can get there. Maybe there's another button that puts it in crawl mode, and so the robot moves really slow, but it gives you a lot of very fine-tuned control to line your robot up exactly where it needs to line up. That's a lot to control with a lot of different buttons on a controller. So if you can create one autonomous action where it's one button push, goes down, picks up that element, lifts it back up, and moves all of those mechanisms the way that they need to move to accomplish that, then that's one big efficiency because you know it's going to complete that same action over and over and over again. What we've shown are just some basic examples. Even today, as we were running the robots around on the floor, we were talking about ways we could improve these robots. There are many, many different ways that you could build different mechanisms, different types of robots to accomplish the same purpose. I mean, that's what engineering is, right? You're in that engineering cycle where you're, you're iterating and you're, you're trying things uh, and you're never going to hit it perfectly the first time. It's always an improvement process.